Welcome to part two of the demonstration using ZOS Connect Enterprise Edition to create REST APIs from a COBOL batch application. In this portion of the demonstration, we'll use the Eclipse-based IBM ZOS Connect EE API editor to create our REST APIs based on the COBOL application we reviewed in part one. To recap, in part one, we looked at the COBOL application source code and copybook data structures of our batch application and we use the BAQ LS to JS utility to create the necessary artifacts used at runtime by our ZOS Connect EE server to perform the JSON to native COBOL data structure mapping. For part two of the demo, we'll use the service archive file generated by the utility to create our REST APIs, which we'll deploy and test in part three. We'll begin with an empty workspace in the IBM Explorer for ZOS with the IBM ZOS Connect EE API editor feature installed. We start by opening the ZOS Connect Enterprise Edition perspective. The first thing we'll do is create a ZOS Connect EE API project, which we'll call COBOL Service. Our API project definitions are stored in the package XML file, which we can edit with the ZOS Connect EE API editor. This is where we provide a name for our API, the base path for the URI used to call our API, and a description and version. The first thing we need to do is decide what our API path should be. Since our COBOL application acts on employee data, we'll use employee for our path. The next thing is to define how we want HTTP POST invocations of our API to be handled, which will be used when a client wants to create a new employee instance. We do this by clicking on Service and selecting the COBOL Service SAR file we generated in Part 1 and downloaded to our workstation. Since our single COBOL batch application can handle all four types of REST functions we want to support, create, read, update, and delete, We'll end up using the same service archive file for all four methods. The reason we can do that, if you recall from part one, is because the action that our COBOL batch application takes is determined by the value of a field passed in on the request. That field, service request type, can be controlled by assigning specific values in the data mapping editor for each method type. What we see here are the default COBOL copybook data structures on the right and the JSON and HTTP data fields on the left. If we don't change anything, the REST client will be presented with and have to provide values for each field in the JSON body of their request. Now, if we think back to how the COBOL application is written, we know that for a POST request, which will be used to create a new employee instance, the service request type field must be set to a value of P. We could either make the client set that value on each request, or more likely, we would want to hide that bit of implementation detail from the client and have the ZOS Connect server take care of that for us which we can do by right-clicking on the service request type field and selecting add assign transformation. Then we set the value to P in the properties tab and omit it from the interface. Another field, field we may want to customize is service request filler. Maybe this copybook is used by other applications which use filler for something specific, but our API does not. Once the request mapping is defined how we'd like, we save it and close the request mapping. Let's now look at the post response mappings. This shows the COBOL copybook data structure on the left, which is the response from our COBOL batch application. If we don't do any customization, every field is returned in the JSON body of the response sent to the client. We probably want to remove the fields in the service response data structure, since the client knows what those values are, since they were provided on the request, so we can add a remove transformation to remove those fields from the response. Next, we'll configure how we want HTTP GET method invocations handled. Again, we can use the same service for GET that we use for POST. So we'll select our COBOL service. Then we can open our request mapping. This is where we assign our value of service request type to G. And then let's also remove service request data field since that data is what we we're requesting from the batch application. And then let's remove filler as well. Then we'll open the response mapping for get. Here's where we want to return the employee data, but not the response message or type. So let's remove the service response status data structure. For a put, we'll assign the same service. Then open the request mapping. Here we can assign a value to service request type. 
we'll set that to U for update and then we'll also remove filler for the put response we'll treat it like a post so we'll remove the service response data fields and just return service response status finally for a delete we'll assign the service then open the request mapping we can set our service request type to D and then we'll remove service re request data and filler and then on the delete response mapping we'll remove the service response data fields just returning service response status so now we have the API behaving just like we want we downloaded the COBOL service archive file from our ZOS system which we created in part one which we then use to create and customize our API in part two in part three we'll deploy the API to our running ZOS connect EE server then test and dynamically update it all from the Eclipse IDE